there. My bad. Okay, so now uh, now we're good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, sure. So I am a full stack JavaScript developer. I work for a company in Lakewood, New Jersey uh, called Bitbean. Uh, what we do is we build um, custom software solutions um, for all different types of industries, pretty much. Okay. Um, my daily stack includes um, pretty much anything JavaScript. So um, I have dabbled a little bit of Vue. I've done a little bit of jQuery. But for the most part, uh, it's Node backend with the MySQL database usually, and then the front end is React Redux. And as of late, we've been doing a lot of TypeScript instead of JavaScript, or at least me personally. Okay. Um, yeah. So, in when when you say JavaScript, um, that's again that's like Node and then uh, and then client side as well. So you do client side and server side, or or like just server side. What what is your um, kind of specialty here? Sure. So over the last I would say fifteen months, I mean, as I've been doing for the you know for the duration of this job, I was basically doing both. But I would say that I had around a sixty forty split, leaning towards client side code. Oh, okay. Okay, got it. Um, so you did not, I mean, you, you didn't go to like, com you didn't study like computer science or anything like that, right? Uh, yes, I basically took a course uh, in Lakewood about two years ago. It was like a nine month course at the time. Um, basically just taught me all the fundamentals about programming. There wasn't really any kind of uh, talk about, you know, I mean, obviously the basic data structures, but there wasn't really any kind of talk about the more complex data structures and certainly no talk about big O notation or anything like that. So a lot of the computer science concepts that I know now, I learned on my own. Okay, sounds good. So um, I am sending you a code bunk. Cool. Um, and I think, uh, since you have, um, you know, no kind of computer science official thing, then we're not going to talk about, um, big O notations. Um, and we're not going to talk about, uh, like algorithms and, and stuff like that. What I, what I want to do is, um, you know, day to day stuff. Okay. Okay, cool, um, sure. So what I want you um, is I want you to, you know, the, the JavaScript um, array uh, array class or, or list class um, has methods like map, uh, reduce, and filter. Mm -hmm. What I want you to do um, is implement those methods. So we're gonna have a function uh, which is a which is a map, uh, well, function of a map, uh, which is going to accept an array, right, um, or ARR, right, and it's gonna accept a function, uh, which is gonna be a callback, um, and I want this to loop over um, the the array and then return a different array, and then I want you to implement the uh, filter function, and then I want you to implement the reduce functions on, on arrays. Right. Okay. Uh, just, to, I guess, th the first question that I would have is, I mean, I guess based on the way that you structured your little example snippet, I think that you're answering it, but I'll ask just to be sure. Uh, you're not asking me to sort of um, append it to the array prototype. You want me to sort of make a function, because that will obviously, you know, make a difference in how the function gets called, because, you know, the map reduce and filter can just be called in my array dot. But with your implementation here, so, so if you want to, to if you want to monkey patch the 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 parent class, I I, I have no objection. Uh, right. I mean, it's it's like I said, it doesn't make a difference to me. I can do it. I think I can do it either way. I was just curious what you know what the requirements would be. Well, whatever you want, whatever is more convenient for you. Okay. Cool. Um, okay. So is that is there anything else that I need to know, or is this no. pretty much what you want me to start? Let's go with? ahead and start with that. <laughs> Okay, cool. Um, right, so the map function, I think, all right, so what we know about the map function is basically it'll take an iterable, um, it'll compute some kind of function at each element of that iterable, and then what it's going to do is return a new array, existing array return a new array, but that array now holds the values of, of the return from the function. So if that wasn't clear, I think, here, so let, I'm going to just start implementing it. I think my code will be the best documentation for what I'm trying to say. Uh, so basically, let's just do let new array We'll start this out to be equal an empty array, um, right? And then, our, right, so then we're going to do a for loop. Oh, this doesn't give me any code completion. That's annoying. Um, 
for it unless in uh, r dot length, and then we're going to do i plus plus. So now I can iterate over each individual one of them. Oh wait, that's no good. All right, so now I have my I can iterate over the I can iterate over the array. So now what I want to do is like want to get um, result. This would be the result of the function. So just result of func whatever that is. I'll invoke it over here, passing in r of i. Um, and then basically what we can then do is just uh, append that result into new array. So then we could just do new array. Wow. It takes a minute to get used to it without the code completion. Yeah, I uh, know. New array dot push. Yeah, it really does. New array dot push passing in uh, results. Okay. And then finally, outside of the for loop, we can uh, go ahead and return the new array. And I think that that should be the implementation of map, return new array. So if I can just test this before I move on to the other ones. Yep, of course. Okay, cool. So let's do that. So, um, gosh, why is it why is it constantly like moving off to the side? I don't know. It's yeah. like it's right, a great. it's a code bunk issue. Oh, interesting. Okay. All right. So let's say let result or let let's start. Let's do this. Let's start with R. Uh, we'll say this one is this. It'll be equal to uh, one, two, three, and four. And what I want to see is I want to have an array where each one was incremented by one. So I want to have two, three, four, five. So let's say let results uh, equals a map. I'm passing in my R. And then the second one will be a callback, which will get a number. Oh, get a number. And it'll say uh, n plus one. And then finally, uh, okay, I'm just going to forget about the annotation for a second, uh, and then we'll just do results. Okay, so let me just run that. Um, right? Um, it's just I'm syntax error. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Still not happy. Okay, so I got to be a little bit more careful there. Um, no, you're just, you're just missing the square brackets. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, so let's just do um, func of r oh, there we go perfect um, and now what should also happen is we should also just the uh, one one more sort of important thing to make sure before we can say definitively that this did in fact work as expected we should also um, output the original array to make sure that it wasn't mutated because that's the way that the map actually works Okay, so that's the map function. Great. Okay, cool. So let's get rid of that. And let me uh, try to implement the reduce function. So the reduce function um, doesn't necessarily know what it's returning. It just knows that it's returning some value, and that value could literally be anything. You can initialize the reduce to return a number, a string, a map, an array. You can do literally anything. So, mm -hmm. all right. So, okay, so let's do that. Let's do function um, reduce. So this one will basically take in, uh, doesn't take in, it, it just takes in the, um, you know, just for one second, I'm going to just quickly write out the, 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 you know, use the real reduce for just one second. Sure. Uh, let result equals, um, no, R doesn't exist, but this is just for the sake of R that reduce ACC current. Uh, reduce is a function that will take in the array, and it also take in a callback. Um, right, okay, and then and then you need to continuously keep returning. Okay, I think I right. And then you need to keep continuously returning your your accumulator again and again. So um, what that's going to do is it's going to be it's going to look like this. It's going to look like uh, reduce. Uh, so we're going to take in the R, take in the callback. Um, Let's start um, with so let how I'm going to catch the accumulator actually because um, I need to return I need to return the accumulator I don't know what it is up front so I oh I could just I guess return this I could just create an uh, an undefined variable so let's just say let acc and then what we can do is um, so let's do a for loop 
and let i equal zero. And then we we'll basically do the same thing we did before. So long as i is less than r dot length plus. Okay. Um, now let's do let result equals um, CB. And so the way that it usually works is that it, it gets the accumulator first and then it gets the array or it gets the element. So we'll do array of I, mm -hmm. right? And then um, that result, what I actually want to do is I want to do uh, accumulate. I want to do that the accumulator is equal to that because I want to just continuously keep overriding this. So in the first iteration, I'll just be undefined. Um, I mean, theoretically, this it should really, okay, I'm a little stuck on one thing, but I'm just going to go with this implementation for a second, and then I'm going to try to reason through it. So I want to just get like the bare bones working and then try to perfect it afterwards. But there's okay. definitely something wrong here. Definitely something wrong here. Um, okay, so we have the for loop, um, keep catching that. And then finally, we can do, we can return the ACC. So I think that this is the bare bones implementation. The only problem is, um, the only problem that I have here is the fact that initially when you first use reduce you can actually get to initialize what your type's going to be so in other words over here the way that i'm initializing it i'm just initializing acc and it's always just going to be undefined but you can actually set it to be a new map from this from the starter you can set it to be a new array yeah, so you, you should can... so you should do it whatever you want right you should you should make your reduce function uh as similarly as similar as you can to the original api of reduce right right of course so i'm just thinking does that mean um so does that mean okay you know what actually for whatever reason i feel like i might actually have a better time if or i don't know i'm just going to try it this way it seems to me like i might have an easier time reasoning about it by mon monkey patching the prototype uh, if i can just spell it right prototype create that prototype dot we'll call it my reduce function and this function will take in a uh, callback. No, 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 no. Okay, so again, so the reduce, you know, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself the, uh, the implementation of the real reduce on screen one more time and then work with that. I think that that's gonna help me. All right, so we'll do our r.reduce. Okay. And then we'll take in the uh, ACC, and we'll take in the current. Okay, great. So we have the we have the accumulator, we have the current, and then right over here, we can initialize what the accumulator is going to be. So we'll just start this out at zero, just for the sake of it. Um, okay, so now that we have that, um, then is again. So let's go back to doing it the other way. We'll just do function reduce. We'll just do function reduce. Reduce. So what this reduce function takes in, the reduce function takes in, is so it has the array and it has your callback. And the callback actually takes in two arguments. The callback takes in two arguments, takes in current and it takes in the accumulator. But the problem is, right, so so it's only on first iteration, it's only on first iteration that the that the accumulator means that before the reduce method even goes into the first iteration, accumulator is in fact undefined. Accumulator only gets its first initial value, whatever the user is initializing it to only in first iteration, which is I think what was happening in my implementation as well. Mm -hmm. So I think I kind of confused myself. So I think I can go back to what I had and work it that way. So let's just pass in. So again, so we're gonna have the array, then we're gonna have the callback. Now let's just do let, um, let ACC, and then we'll do this again for I, well, what happened there? Or let I equal zero, so long as I is less than R dot length, then I plus plus. Okay, and then we'll just, so now here, when we come to the, to the original, to the first iteration, ACC will now be equal to whatever the function passes back, which is going to be the first, um, whatever it is. In other words, it's going to be the first, um, of the accumulator, essentially. That's that's my that's my thought process. So we'll pass in callback, uh, we'll pass in the ACC, and then we'll pass in R, the current element, which is current, so that'll be R of I. And then finally, what you wanna do is you wanna just return ACC. Okay, so I'm gonna do something that I 
I'm just the test that I'm going to do for this reduce function is going to be what I always do for reduce. Um, see if this works. Um, an array. One, two, three, four. We do the same thing again, and then we could do let result equals um, let result equals uh, reduce. Passing in my array, and then my callback. Um, so this is going to get the callback gets the array, so that's R, and then it gets the mistake. The callback gets the ACC, and it gets the current. It's actually my implementation. I'm not even right. I'm not even initializing. So now what I can just do is, I can just do return current. Uh, no, I can do return ACC. I, I feel like something's wrong, but I'm just going to run it real quick. Getting nan. Right, because it start, it's not starting out. It's not starting out. Um, and, Sorry, that's right. So let's do, I mean, what kind of JavaScript can I use in this environment? Um, I don't know. I actually don't know. Okay. Okay. So there you go. So then this would be my implementation of reduce. So in other words, in other words, the same way that when you're using the reduce, when you monkey patch in a prototype, you need to pass in an option or another parameter. You need to pass in what your ACC starts out at. You need to do that over here. You need to, so in other words, when you're, when you're using my implementation of reduce and you're passing in the accumulator and you want to initialize it, you can use the default um, uh, value for a parameter, Great. which would be this. Now let's go ahead and do the filter. Get rid of my little testing uh, playground here and let's do the filter. So, the filter returns an array, but only those that pass the condition, right? Is that right? So in other words, they, they only it only returns the ones that pass the conditions. Those that fail the condition don't, right? So I think that, that I think that that's how it is. Yeah. So let's do let's do that. Uh, so let's do function. Whoops. Function filter. Um, so the filter will once again take in the array, take in the callback. So we're going to start out with an empty array. Once again, go through the for loop or let i equal zero so long as i is less than r dot length i plus plus. Okay, so now what we want to do is we're going to assume that the callback is going to return a Boolean. So I should theoretically just be able to do if cb um, function call. Uh, do I have an extra parenthesis here? No, I don't think I do. So if cd function call passing in the current element, so whatever element it is, we're going to be running some condition on it. If this one is returns true, then what we'll do is we'll say result dot push. Whoops, that's not right. Result dot push um, r of return, or yeah, return result. Okay, so let me just test that real quick. Um, so once again, we can do let r equals two, three, four. Um, let's say let result equals calling my filter. We're going to be passing in the array. And then my callback is going to be checking to see if they're even numbers. I think that'll be simple. Or I could do it even simpler than that. I can just say. Uh, greater than one, and then I should theoretically get two, three, and four. So let's do that. So let's do. Um, you can just do it this way. N, and then if wait, I feel like I have an extra parenthesis, right? Yeah, I do. Uh, so if n is greater than one, and then console. Whoop. Result. Okay, let's run that. And let's see what happens. Get two, three, and four. I got two, three, and four. Awesome. So now um, I want you to make those uh, functions chainable. Interesting. So what I can do is, for example, I can do um, 
I don't know, whatever. So var x equals whatever. And then I can do x dot map and then dot filter and then dot um, reduce and right. then um, print this. So here you can monkey patch whatever you want. I mean, I, I think over here I would kind of be required to um, monkey patch the prototype. Well, you can either monkey patch the prototype or create a new class, right? Yeah. I'm, which will I take mean, which will take array as as its input. Whatever you want. Again. So I'm just thinking. I've actually. It's interesting. I've, it's funny because this is actually something that's been in my mind for a while that I, I I I've never actually figured out how things are chainable. I just knew that they can be chainable. So I really should have practiced this on my own time because uh -huh. now I kind of had to do some anything. <laughs> That's funny. Uh -huh. Okay. I mean, I, uh -huh. I conceptually, <laughs> I conceptually have a bit of an idea. I think, right? In other words, the, the the whole point is that that what? No, no. One second. It, I I think it has something to do with polymorphic this. So. So basically, the way that the this keyword works, and I might be going down a complete rabbit hole here, but I'm just going to think my, my initial thought process for a second. Um, I think that the way it works is that, in other words, if you're calling map, and since map returns an array, the question is, though, why can it know? So that doesn't really explain anything. Why does it just get rid of this test over here? Oh. Oh, that was you. Oh, interesting. That that was laggy. I did not see that until I started scrolling there. Okay, right. So, so right. So we can do x dot map dot filter dot reduce, and the question becomes, why is that possible? Why don't I have to wrap one inside of the other? Because, right. In other words, out here, in order for you to 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 in order for you to be able to call dot filter on the result of dot map, the result of dot map must must still be of the array prototype, which is fine because map returns an array. Because map returns an array, so that's why. That's well, but 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 in but in this case, what we're thinking about, let's let's check this out for a minute. So let's do that. So x map, x reduce, and and x filter, right? Which are not methods on on the array prototype. Um, and what I want you to do is I want you to define those functions on a different class, which is you know its parent class can be a prototype uh, the, the array. Uh, but x map, x filter, and x reduce. If you call them on array, you will get a, an undefined, right? Right. Of course. Of course. Right. Right. Um, Let me see. All right. So I guess uh, I guess I'll just keep this code around. No. You know. Yeah. Let's just go here. I guess. Um, I mean, what happens? What happens if I'm to use like class? You know, can I just do this just for a second, just to test my environment here? Let's just do like class app. Yep. Okay, cool. So let's just do this. Uh, hardly ever even use class syntax unless if I'm writing React because this is JavaScript. But for, let's just try this, and then we'll just do uh, constructor, which I find is literally the hardest word for me to spell ever, like actually ever. <laughs> yep. Um, and then do console dot log. Here. Okay. Now um, class app, and then what I want to do is what happened here. I'm missing it. I'm missing a quote. Okay. Okay. So now, uh, I'm sorry. I don't know why CodeBank does that. Okay, it's fine. All right. So now let's just do let my app equals new app. Now that I'm doing this, I'm thinking I might not even need the class syntax at all, but that's fine. Okay. So let me just comment all this out so nothing comes into Oh, I can't do that. Okay, never mind. It shouldn't. It shouldn't affect me one way or another. So it's fine. Right, because you have your. Yeah, just print. remove that print. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Okay, fine. But you know what? I'm actually thinking now. I don't think I need this. I don't think I need or. No, maybe I. Maybe I do. Let's try it this way. Let's just say. Let's just say. Uh, cl um, class. Um, let's call it my array. Array. Just theoretically work. So now the question becomes. Um, so hang on a second. So if I did this, if I did this, if I now made uh, my array extend array, 
And theoretically speaking, all of the native um, prototypical methods that exist on the array prototype should already be accessible to my array. So wouldn't that already um, uh, satisfy the requirements? Well, why? Because I'm I'm telling you it should it should be called x map x filter and x reduce, right? You don't want me to use right. So in other words, you're saying you don't want me to use the built-in array prototypes. You want me to write my own prototypes, yeah. but they should still be able to be called as if they were native. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Um. Let's try that. Okay. So then I can theoretically I can just say look. So let's call map. Um, map would be passing in if I get access to the array inside of the class sheet, I literally never use uh, the, the class syntax, but I feel like that with the prototype, like creating the constructor function, I feel like that would have probably the same issue. So I'm going to keep with the class syntax because it's definitely a little bit easier to work with, I think. Um, so the question now becomes is how do I get access to myself? Um, so I want to say, so Right, so what's gonna, yeah, so it's gonna be this, right? It's definitely gonna be this because the way that this is gonna work is you're gonna, let's say, call it um, my array. So I'll have like an instance of my array. Mm -hmm. My array, then I wanna call like my array dot map. So theoretically, the this will then be referring to my array. So yeah, so that'll be, that'll be my instance. So that'll be this, um, that'll be my array. And then the callback will be what I pass in. Right, I'm still not confident this is gonna work. But so then, theoretically speaking, I should. Uh, you're you're to... on the right track. Just 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 go with it. Just you know, continue running your code until something works. Uh, right, I think you're okay, on the that... right track. Yeah. I guess. Oh shoot! There's no way to format this, huh? They're not like a command shift P kind of thing. I just no. have to do this manually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this doesn't feel right. Something doesn't feel right here. I think this. Uh, hang on a second. This is my. This is my uh, outer, and this one is probably closing that one. So I think that this can actually come back here. I think, and then this cube you can come back a tad. Okay. So uh, basically, we got we got our map function, and then we will basically do uh, new array, then return new array. So I think what I want to do before I even move on, I just want to make sure that I didn't break my map function. I want to make sure that it still works as I as I as I expected to. So let's say um. Wait, I have an issue though. I have an issue. I've completely missed one very important point. How am I going to populate this array? Give it, I didn't give it a push method. I have to actually be able to maintain state on this array. So I kind of need to have, I need to have a, um, yes, yeah, so I need to have something to be able to add. So we'll say add, which takes in an item. Item. What this can really do is internally just have its own array. So it's actually just wrapping an array. So we could just say, um, uh, let, no, I, actually it's inside of a class. So we could just do state equals an array. Um, and then over here we can do uh, state uh, push. And now it's starting to think that the this is not necessary actually. Uh, so state that push item. So I've got my state array, which is going to basically be, so every single time that you instantiate this array, um, now I'm not going to work about the constructor, like you want to initialize an array with some data at first. I'm going to skip that implementation yeah, yeah, portion. Yeah, let's, let's not worry simple. about that right now. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I've got my state array, and then when you can call item, you'll just take this item and push it into the array. So therefore here, I actually don't need that. I can just call it on state directly because there's no need for this. Um, uh, there's no need for that. Okay, cool. So I, now I actually have a way to populate my array. Uh, new array. Okay. Nice thing. So now let's just quickly uh, populate this a little bit. Let's just do my array dot add passing in one, and then I'll just do. As I've seen people say recently, copy pasta. I never saw that before, but recently people have been saying that. I actually saw that. Okay. Yeah. Thing lately, I think. Um, okay, so I've got my I've got my array. Um, I'm adding one, two, three, and then what I want to do is I want to see my new let new array equals uh, my array dot map. But let's call it X map, just so we can make sure that it's being called on this object. 
good point. We call it XMAP and then passing in. So now actually all I need to do is just pass in the callback because it's already been called internally on the array. It already has access here. So just do N and then just do N plus one. Just change line 24 to my array and... Change line 20. Oh, right, right, good call. The, uh... Thank you. Yep. Console.log, um, new array. See if we blow up in spectacular fashion, which we do. Oh, okay, I guess that makes sense. I guess that makes sense. Um, I suppose they would want me to do this instead. So in React, in the class, and I'm just curious, like, see, that's the problem where I'm trying to kind of differentiate between the environments of, of, of JavaScript, because I definitely know that this syntax that I had here is valid. There's no question that it is, um, but maybe they want me to do this instead. Or otherwise, I'll have to do it inside of a constructor function. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. I think we're going to have to do inside of a constructor function uh, that just initializes an empty array. Mm -hmm. And call this dot state. <laughs> right. Like, yeah, because that's a, that's a stage two pr proposal, I think. So <clears throat> I'm guessing CodeBunk doesn't support that yet. Uh, constructor, I think it is. And just do this.state is going to be equal to an empty array. And then over here, I just got to switch this to be this dot. And then over here, just uh, switch this to this dot. And then same thing here, switch this to this dot. Once more, and, and oh, like, I didn't get rid of this. Yeah. Yep. Um. Okay. Well, why do you need that there? This dot state. Why do you need that? In in I mean in the that function cool? definition, why do you need that? I mean, what am I? Just trying to think how else would I get how else would I get access to this property right well, it's in other words it's well you have that here right you don't really need this one Mr. Delicious Soup thank you for the following oh, you're saying that when I'm passing it into the function I don't need it but I certainly do need it here oh yeah there you do need it of course oh okay fine fine yeah yeah that was a good call I didn't I, I totally totally thank you for the one. follow yeah, for sure. yeah go ahead still is the yeah Okay, so that's where it's complaining though, but that that's not yeah, it's gonna complain every single place where I'm using this that state. It's saying this is not defined. That's the problem. And the reason why this is not defined, so let's just be clear. This is not defined. That is not the that's not the error that I was expecting to see. Why why would this not be, be defined? <clears throat> hmm. This might not be defined. So again, uh, basically, right. My thought process is Thank that you this should be referred follow. to. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I'm, my thought process is that this should be referring to to my array, right? To to the actual this, right? This, yeah. in other words, this. And on this, we have the state property. Therefore, this should definitely work. But and the truth of the matter is, I think I'd be technically right because the error that it's complaining about is not saying that it doesn't know what length of undefined is. Because it, it, that's not where it's, it's actually blowing up even before that's blowing up into this. It's blowing up that this is undefined. And it's specifically blowing up here. Can I just, can I do a quick Google search of how to like the class? Wait, is it, is it, like, is it uh, exploding in, in the constructor? It's yeah, based on this, it seems like it is right. We're doing this that state is equal to an empty array. So it seems like I'm blowing up at the constructor. Yeah. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah, so go ahead. Uh, you can Google that like a quick class extend. Yes, of course. Uh, I'm a script. Um. Interesting, right? So that I'm seeing this syntax right over here. I'll just post it in so that everybody can see this of what I'm trying to work with, but I, I would figure that this should theoretically work. So here's an example that I just found right off, right, like my first Google search right there. So you're creating this class rectangle, it's got a constructor, which takes in some things that you want to initialize with, and then you can just do this, that height, and this, that width. So what I'm trying to understand is what am I doing differently? 
Well, first of all, you have the extent. I was like, oh, 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 of course, of course, of course. Of course, okay. I think you're missing a keyword there. Yes, I am. Thank you. Okay. That was a spaz moment. <laughs> okay. Now it's, it's, it's not happy with this, which makes sense because I should be doing this dot state. Took this away. All right, because it's called CB. Okay. So, you know, before I run this, let me just make sure that I don't have like any more things that are going to blow up on me. So I'm taking in my callback, creating a new array, and I'm iterating over this, I'm iterating over this dot state dot length, which at this point should theoretically be referring to what I think it is. Um, then I'm doing let result equals CB, which is the function that I'm passing in right over here, passing in this dot state of I, the new array that push result, finally returning uh, new array. Okay. And then there we go. So this definitely still works. This definitely still works. So now, um, new array is now is now an array. New array is now an array, and it should theoretically be the same type. It is now going to be the original array. It's not going to be my array. Mm -hmm. That's where that's where the breakdown is going to be. So I need to somehow figure out that when I'm returning new array, it's got to be more than me just returning new array. I need to somehow make it so that the this um, doesn't lose. I need to make sure that the this on this new array doesn't uh, point to the original array prototype that's built into JavaScript, but rather I want it to point to my prototype. Yep. And that's, that's the trick. That's the trick right there. Okay, fine. So now I'm at the crux of the problem. I need to just figure out how to do that. I know, to be honest. This is, yeah, so this is basically the thing that I was saying is that like a while ago, I remember like trying to, like looking into this and I started and for whatever reason I got distracted and I never came back to it and it's been on my mind ever since and it finally bit me. Yep. It did. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it really did. Yeah. Let me just see if I can think for a second about how this might work. So, um, the work binding is something that works on a message, right? That's not that's not the case. That's that's. I think it's totally off base. That is totally off base. Um, how do I? I'm not seeing it at the moment. I don't know. All right. So let's think about it for a minute. <clears throat> so in your in your map x map function, um, mm -hmm. what do you need to return in order for this to be chainable to another, for example, x map function? I can say no more. Okay. Yeah. I think so. Right. Uh, well, I just have to spell spell this right. So yeah, spelling is usually that, usually important. Yeah, usually important a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so I think that, that right. So that's as soon as you started saying that, I think it clicked. I think that this makes sense, right? So now this new array is not going to be of the array prototype, rather it's going to be of my array prototype, and therefore my array prototype can in fact have access to the X map. Or in this case, I'm going to create a new function. We're going to call this. Um, we're going to call this one. Let's just let's just go with uh, filter, I guess. Let's just try to see if we can implement filter first. Um, well, let's see if that works first, right? Or did you already but, do it? Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. I should make sure that my code hasn't, shouldn't, we didn't regress. I think we did. Interesting. We did. Um, because, because it's definitely, because what we're getting back is we're getting back the object. We're definitely getting back the object. What I'm getting is it's like an array that has two, three, four, because that's what I pushed into it, but it starts out with the actual state. Yep. What I can do is, right, so then what I can do is, okay, so that, that was my mistake. That was my mistake. I'm treating this like an array when I should really probably do new array dot state dot push, um, push result. And then over here, I think I should do um, return new array dot state. I think so. Let me just run this again. And that makes sense. There we go. And but then I'm back to square one. Yeah. Then I'm back to square one because now I'm returning an actual array. Unless I feel like I'm just gonna keep going in circles. I'm gonna keep um, solving the problem the same way and running into the same issue and solving the problem again. I think I'm just chasing my own tail because my, my thought process is now is to initialize state to be equal to uh, an instance of my array. 
then the problem is that this is going to be the same thing again. So now this state is actually not just going to be an array. It's going to actually be an instance of my array, which means that it's going to have on its state that state. And I'm just going to keep going through the same issue again and again. So, I'm so on, if you extend the right array, track, right? why do you need this that state to be a new array? I extend array. Wait, no. So I mean, you extend the uh, array, I mean, right? Yeah. So you, you extended the array and then you added add here. So mm -hmm. if you don't do that and you just do that and here, instead of add, you do a push. Will that work? Oh, yeah, that should definitely work, right? Because all the, pro all the methods that exist in array should now be accessible to the my array as well. Okay. It's right, of course. Is okay, so I, yeah, yeah, I think that this was actually much simpler. I think I was overthinking this, so let me just make sure now. So, then in that case, what I can do is I can actually get rid of this whole shebang here and just do new array dot push, and then we'll still do this, and then we'll get rid of this. Um, and then we'll just say let my array is equal to new my array, then we'll just push all those in, then we'll call my x map, and then we'll log it. Let's make sure that this is still working. Um, it's not right because now we're doing this dot state dot length, so what I should really be doing is um this dot length bye sure and there we go okay fine fine yeah so that actually makes a lot more sense i was totally missing the, the missing important point there okay so this actually makes a lot more sense so i've got my array which extends array I'm giving it this um, this added function, but of course, because it's extending the array prototype, all those methods are accessible to it now, so therefore I can just use them and treat it like it's a regular array. But since what I'm returning is my prototype, so therefore if I now give this another method... Well, so now, now, it's not, not, now it's not important. Now it's jarhead code. Okay. You know, um, it's literally like copy-pasting and that, that's not really interesting, not to me, not to you, and not to the people in the chat room. Right, okay. okay um, cool. So, you know what I mean? It's not it's not that the interview is not going well. I'm just stopping you because this this part is not it doesn't add any complexity or anything, you know, anything like that. Um so <clears throat> um we are like 35 minutes in. I would say maybe 40 minutes in. Um and um let me just refresh here. People need to refresh just one second because the uh the size here is uh, messed up just one second okay so uh, how do you think it went um i think i had some boneheaded moments <laughs> for sure i would say if i had to give myself a rating of how i feel personally i did especially because it was all purely javascript and so I are you gonna like, give an I integer are you gonna give an integer score <laughs> <laughs> between Dude, one gonna, to ten <laughs> yeah okay yeah. so let's do an so, integer between one to ten I, I would give myself about a seven, seven and a half, I would say, because there were some things that like I just I should have seen like really silly mistakes that I made that are bothering me. Okay. Um, so I, anything else? I think I think that's the only comment I have as far as I can tell. Okay. Otherwise, I think it was okay. Great. Uh, so we're definitely aligned. Um, I definitely think um, I, I would give you an eight as well. Um, it definitely shows that. Um, that you are that you know the language that you work with um and and you know you work with this language every day um so it's not like you know usually when i interview people and i tell them okay this interview is in python and they usually usually do java for example then you can see this level of um you know just discomfort um so here you you can definitely see that uh <laughs> someone is saying that uh, i asked you to give an integer and you gave seven and a half that's how uh that's a, that's a good point <laughs> that, that's how people that's in the chat point. room are uh <laughs> my god um and um so you definitely like control the, the language that that you work with um um two things that uh that i would uh that that i would comment on um one is that you talk very fast um so okay. so for me that's not really a problem um, for under for other interviewers that might be um, because and I and I and I 
I told that to other uh, interviewees as well. Um, it can come out really strong, um, almost intimidating. Um, again, to me, it's not really a problem, but for other people, it's like, wait a second. It's like they're, they're, they feel like they're going to be like they're being interviewed and not you're being interviewed. Um, so just like mind that and mind, mind your tone. Uh, just like talk just a couple notches slower um, and you'll do fine. Other than that, I think really the, the, the things that you kind of fell on uh, are really, really stupid um, and, and like could have been solved with like literally five seconds of Googling. So I'm not even relating to those, all the extends and super. And so it's like, you know what I mean? Right. It's like uh, I'm brushing that off. It's not even worth mentioning uh, because no one has that mental context to all the languages that they work with. Um, you know, for me, for example, I, I move between uh, Python, uh, Go and JavaScript, like literally every single day I, I move between those three languages. And literally every time I need to do to check an array length, I need to Google that because I can never remember whether it's a method, right. whether it's, a, it's an extension method or whether it's a method in the uh, array prototype. Like I never remember that. So I never expect other people to remember that as well. So all the things that I think you think went kind of iffy, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't think that way at all. Um, you know, I think it's just natural and you didn't really like remember how to write a constructor and what is extends and why did you have that state? Um, it's really not that important to me. Um, so I definitely would not mention that. I don't think it's worth mentioning. Um, other than that, I think, I think, I think it went great. I think, I think you, if this was a real interview, you would pass with, with flying colors. Um, and, uh, yeah, one thing that, uh, ju just so you know, one thing that if this was a real interview, I would, I would take note that, okay, so he knows like the language, um, but, um, I would still give you, um, like a take home exercise. Um, okay. So it, but, but, um, the, the take home exercise would kind of try to work on your th or, or, or th on the things uh, that will kind of take you to the limit of, of uh, server side and, and client side. But if I said, okay, so now I'm interviewing you just to server side, I would, I would pass you with, with flying colors. Um, I'm, I'm literally just like thinking of your background and I say, so this guy is probably just full stack. And I, because I didn't ask you anything about like React or anything like that, I would just just check that you have right. the same knowledge here um, in React as well. Um, Makes sense. Which I, I happen to really enjoy those kind of take-home exercises. In the past, I've only had them twice, and and all the all the interviews that I've had, those were actually my favorite. I, I think it gives you the chance to show off the most, and you feel most comfortable because you're just doing it on your own time at the comfort of your own home. So that's really nice. So I, d I don't usually like them uh, because I think it's invading your, your personal time. Um, right. But again, it's just, it's just a matter of approach. Um, I, I only give them if I, if I feel like I haven't gotten what I needed to get out of the, of the hour. Um, and just I need just a touch more to feel confident. But again, I, I would feel confident to, to pass you. Gotcha. Um, okay. so definitely, definitely a good interview. Uh, you, you, yeah, just, just a great interview. Seriously. Good job. Great job. I really, I really, really appreciate hearing that because I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, like I've been, I've been a little bit on the struggle with the interview process and, uh, you know, it's, it's been a little bit weird to me because I, I do feel confident with my JavaScript skills. I do feel confident within the stack that I work daily and I'm not applying to jobs that are outside of the realm of the stack that I'm working with. So it's been a little yeah, bit but, frustrating. But, to but to be honest, some of the, um, so, so here's the thing, right? I, as an interviewer, I, I hear that background and I say, okay, so he doesn't have a CS background. So I'm not going to give you like an algorithmic questions. Some companies, they don't give a shit whether you have this background or whether you have that background. Everybody goes okay. through the same funnel. Um, so to be honest, I don't know if you would have gone through that same funnel 
um and and i would give you like the question like i gave the other the other guy you know bill that that went before you i don't know if you would mm -hmm. pass i'm not saying there is right, no in, sure. there is no indication in this interview that yet you wouldn't pass another interview but i'm I know, um, like as a self-taught programmer, that I don't feel comfortable in the heavy CS stuff. You know what I mean? So I can imagine that you're the same. Um, that's, that's 100% accurate. I definitely find myself to be way more at home in the day-to-day -day tasks of actual language and frameworks and things like that than, you know, brain teasers. That exactly. You, you're a problem here. solver. You're a problem solver, but, but, but you have a, a very specific domain to your problem, right, which is really day-to-day -day stuff. And, and sometimes, even to me, even sometimes the questions are, are, are hard to even grasp, like rotating a spiral or anything like that, right? So there are a type of engineers that this, like, problem is literally up their alley and there are some engineers that that is not um what i'm saying is there is no indication in this interview that you wouldn't do well in the other interview uh but what i'm saying if you if you target other companies like you know big four um or um you know anything anything of, of that kind of type of of companies then what i would um uh, what i would recommend is uh to work on lit code problems um, and just like work on your problem solving that is that is like hard problems like rotating right. rotating spirals uh, the the mapping of, of uh, phone numbers um, you know minefield and and so on and so forth so just literally go through that um, and and solve it one by one um, at first you will like struggle a lot um, right but um, but but with time it will come as a second nature just like this does uh, but it's it's a muscle that needs to train okay that makes sense makes sense all right any questions i think that our conversation just now covered everything i can think of so yeah Great. i think we're good mm -hmm. awesome so thank you for um for uh being here and uh, it was awesome having you thank you so much for this interview i really appreciate it man of course no problem have a good one well, bye all right so this was a very good interview um i think um and um yeah so this was a very good interview yeah yeah he he was